Hi, I'm Mary Ann Price, the Executive Director of the Cornea Research Foundation of America. I have a background in science and engineering and a PhD in genetics from Indiana University School of Medicine. And so I'm really excited to share with you today some recent findings from a study about the genetics of Fuchs dystrophy. My husband, Frank Price, is an eye surgeon who specializes in cornea transplants. Together, we work to find new and better ways to restore vision. And we work hard to educate doctors and patients around the world so that people everywhere can benefit from our discoveries. 10 years ago, we embarked on a study to figure out what causes Fuchs dystrophy. This is a condition that causes your vision to become cloudy as you get older. It affects about 4% of people over the age of 40 and is the most common reason that someone in the United States would need to have a cornea transplant. Fuchs dystrophy runs in families, so we know it has a strong genetic component. Our colleagues at the Case Western Reserve University in Ohio applied for and received funding from the National Eye Institute to do a large genetic study to figure out why it runs in families. They invited us to help recruit patients for this study because we have probably the busiest cornea transplant practice in the country. And they also invited me to participate on the steering committee to help oversee this study. So what was involved in conducting this study? Here at our center in Indianapolis, we recruited over 300 patients with Fuchs dystrophy. All of them had reached the point where they needed a cornea transplant. We also recruited some of their family members. Each person underwent a detailed eye examination, and we also collected information about their demographics, such as their age, their sex, whether they were a smoker, and other potential risk factors. Finally, each person agreed to donate several tablespoons of their blood so that we could perform a DNA analysis. DNA is what makes you unique. It's a set of instructions that's present in every single cell in your body. If we were to type out those instructions on paper, it would fill rooms full of file cabinets. Between any two different people, there are millions of small differences in their DNA. For a study to analyze the genetics, we need to recruit thousands of people and compare the differences between people who have Fuchs dystrophy and people who don't. So we collaborated with partners of 15 other sites around the United States to collect blood samples from over 2,000 patients with Fuchs dystrophy and compare them with blood samples from over 3,000 people who don't have Fuchs dystrophy. So as you can imagine, it took a long time to recruit all these participants and then do a very thorough analysis of the DNA. So what did we find? Well, the first exciting finding is we identified three genes that were never before known to be associated with Fuchs dystrophy. And we also confirmed the importance of a fourth gene that had been previously identified. Secondly, for the first time, we found some reasons why Fuchs dystrophy is much more common in women than it is in men. We found that variants in one gene confer increased risk in women, while variants in another gene confer increased risk in men. So what's next? Identifying these genes will help us design a test to help identify who's at risk for developing Fuchs dystrophy. Currently, we're collaborating on some exciting studies that suggest that it may actually be possible to regenerate healthy cells to replace the cells that have become damaged in Fuchs dystrophy. With a cornea transplant, we get great results, but there's always a small risk that your body will reject the donor tissue. Potentially, regenerating your own cells could be preferable, but we still have a lot of work to do to work out the details to make this safe and reliable. So should you wait for these new procedures? Well, if it were me, I definitely wouldn't wait because we've already got an amazing transplant procedure that we have helped perfect over the last eight years. That procedure is called 
to MEC. We actually just replaced the single diseased cell layer in your cornea with a healthy cell layer from a donor cornea. And the chance that your body will reject that is now less than 1%. We've also, through a series of studies, optimized the medication regimen to really reduce any side effects from the medications that you take with the transplant. So this is a fabulous procedure right now today, but we also have exciting things to look forward to in the future. And we appreciate your support that helps make these discoveries possible.